right, uh, it's the uh, second day and uh, uh, time to get the day started. Uh, yesterday, uh, I had mentioned that uh, <laughs> that NOAA was the uh, National Oceanic and Atmospheric uh, Association. And it wasn't. It's uh, it was sort of my mistake. There is the National. Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. Um, <laughs> I know them simply as NOAA a lot of times. That's where most people talk talk about NOAA. They, they don't use the acronym. And sometimes uh, you forget what the acronym actually means or or bits and pieces of it. Um, so it's time to get the day started. Um, I'm going to be trying to do this as much as possible without editing, so the comments uh, in the morning and the evening uh, will be raw and unedited. Uh, there will be, during the week, uh, maybe some edited segments when I get the cameras working. Uh, I've done the tests on both cameras, and it seems to be working okay. Uh, I still have some fixing up to do, so um, it's going to be a couple days before uh, edited scenes of the uh, research facilities in the library, uh, which on the front seems like it's something large, but it's not. It's a uh, uh, it, it's standard business unit, uh, about 1,600 square feet, uh, broken up into several different rooms. Uh, there's a front door and a back door with a back garage door. Uh, the back has the machine shop and the rest are different uh, rooms and offices. Uh, the one I'm in now is the back room where I do my reading and at the end of the day I go to sleep here because uh, there's work to do even in the, in the middle of the night so there really isn't any uh, going home in terms of the classic, you know, the, the usual sense of uh, uh, I'm gonna go home now, my day is over, I'm gonna go home and sleep because there's usually something to do in the middle of the night, something popped up with the server, something pops up with the computers, uh, uh, there, there were sometimes uh, an experiment or, or uh, something you're doing will take all night long, and so while the computer or the machine is doing its work for those hours, you go to sleep with sort of one eye or one ear open for any problems that pop up. They just set the little, a little alarm on the uh, the machine so if something goes wrong and it stops the machine stops it sounds alarm you get up and uh, you go fix whatever is wrong uh, if there's anything wrong sometimes it's just the alarm itself uh, malfunctions and turns everything off and when you go to check it you see everything's okay and all that's happened is that the alarm itself has malfunctioned um, so that uh, it usually means that all you have to do is reset the alarm reset the machines and uh, go back to sleep again uh, and the way my day usually works is uh, there's no set time uh, what determines my sleep pattern really de is dependent on how much studying is has to be done during the day how much studying has to be done uh, f and, and in terms of the, the amount of uh, projects that I'm working on um, so the day could be as short as 12 hours or it could be even uh, if I'm really pushing it it could be close to 30 hours it could you know I could be you know doing one of those all-nighters where you're just working 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 um, it does get tiring but uh, it's something that I like to do so um, <laughs> it's the, t the, the tiredness comes with this type of job uh, and my type of job is uh, if you really want to see a little more of it in terms of the overall uh, SAS, you can watch the Big Bang Theory that's uh, kind of uh, gives you an idea of, of the type of person that I am uh, basically I'm a combination of all three uh, I do my theoretical work but because I'm on my own, uh, I have to do a lot of the engineering work, so that puts me in the uh, category of Howard. Um, 
but I'm not totally a theorist, so I'm not a lot. I'm not uh, that puts me in the category a little bit uh, like Leonard, uh, and because uh, I have a um, uh, a Greek Asian background uh, f stretches all the way from the the uh, the culture stretches all the way from uh, uh, Africa up into into Asia. Uh, that puts me in the category of Raj. <laughs> so I have my spicy foods. I have my, uh, I don't know, the, the what do call it, the ethnic food almost every single day. But unlike uh, uh, the guys on uh, Big Bang Theory, uh, I don't order out uh, because I don't have um, the finances to do that. So what I did is I built a little uh, restaurant or bistro in there, which really isn't too much of a problem since. It's because of my Greek background, uh, just throw a stone uh, into a Greek crowd, and more likely than not, you'll hit a restauranter. You know, someone who owns a restaurant. So it's not a big deal for someone like myself to uh, build uh, their own restaurant inside uh, of an office. And once you start doing that, uh, the actual cost of the food starts going down. Um, I'll give you an example: if you have a big sandwich uh, that you would get at a submarine shop, you spend. Uh, Maybe up to fifteen dollars for you know th this is uh, on, on on a good sa sandwich size sandwich. Uh, you'd spend up to fifteen dollars on it, uh, including drinks and chips or whatever you want to do with it. Uh, here, the total cost would maybe be about two bucks uh, for a meal. So you can calculate the difference and see uh, <laughs> you know where the savings are. You know, so if you you know you like going up, but you don't want to spend uh, uh, all that money, uh, you can uh, if you learn how to cook, you can uh, do uh, all the work at home. There's no need to go out and uh, spend. Uh, you know, the average person spends about uh, uh, thirty dollars a day simply eating out. So and that depends if you're eating even if uh, like. Uh, uh, I went uh, a couple months ago. I went uh, just f to get a snack. I went to McDonald's to get a snack, and the, that snack cost me uh, just about ten dollars. You know, it was ten dollars for McDonald's. So if you're spending t uh, two bucks or two fifty on a good uh, size uh, uh, sandwich, uh, like a submarine sandwich, uh, on an Italian bun, and you know. On, with uh, coleslaw and uh, you know freshly uh, roasted meats or freshly cured meats, if you're making your own, because you can make your own cold cuts and stuff like that. Uh, that's simply a curing process rather than uh, rather than using chemical preservatives. Uh, you can really cut the cost of eating out and the cost of your your, your food budget, and the rest of that money goes into. Uh, uh, your uh, research that you can you get by equipment or uh, usually in this case here um, I've chosen to make my own equipment as much as possible so my computer system my computers were refurbished uh, I work with Linux uh, I didn't sit down and try to fiddle around with Linux to get it to work to do what I needed to get done um, this is what I was sort of doing yesterday um, working on building a uh, uh, a uh, music studio next to my uh, uh, electronics table. And that's, so that's yesterday. If you watched my uh, YouTube uh, uh, activities, you'll see I was looking at this uh, uh, this Linux uh, music studio that allows you to do your own techno. You can you can actually it's got a whole uh, array of instruments on there that you can produce. Start producing your own music. Uh, whether it's technical, well, you know, most people use it f uh, that I've seen on there. Where they're using it for techno and uh, more of on the electronic side of, of music, they're really, really doing anything much beyond that. Uh, but I'm pretty sure, and this is what I'm going to try to do: is take it beyond its standard use into something more, uh, uh, more complex, and then eventually into uh, voice analysis. Because uh, if you want to do robotics, uh, particularly we're going to be building a cyborg. Uh, you need to look into speech synthesis, and it's through the audio sign that you get into speech synthesis. So, uh, working on the music is the back door in to speech synthesis. 
so that's the way I'm doing it and because Linux has these offerings for free uh, you sit down you start working on it and you basically start it's basically you don't start off with any particular idea or really any knowledge you pick what you like and you start working on learn it uh, and you start moving ahead bit by bit it's a, it's, a, it's a sort of a bit by bit process rather than being all together ah this is what I know I'm an expert at this and it and, and just sort of moving ahead in chunks if you try to move ahead in chunks uh, more often than not you'll end up failing uh, and because your your attitude is such that you expect to move ahead in chunks uh, there are a number of people that I know who uh, were like that and just simply said well this isn't for me and walked off and stopped doing physics they stopped doing their science and, and went into uh, other fields of endeavor uh, but that's not for me uh, I'm sort of the type who perseveres if uh, something doesn't work one way you take a break uh, go do something else and then come back to it a little bit later on and try something different and what I found for me is if I broke break the project up into uh, small tiny bits it's easier to achieve those small tiny bits than it is to jump and try the entire project all at once so that's why I have a, a, a lot of different projects going on rather than just one large project uh, it really takes me to better place in terms of how I'm able to progress so um, that's it for this morning's uh, 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 hellos or commentary um, I will continue on hopefully uh, later on the day adding some more comments uh, yesterday um, was uh, sort of an off day so I really didn't get to do uh, the extra um, commentaries that I wanted to do so uh, let's try this again today and see uh, what type of commentaries I can put up uh, and later on in the week hopefully I'll get the cameras working so that we can start doing some walk arounds alright that's it for today I'll see you later